Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Immortality, where today we are in search of an ending. Because I did, as I said I was going to, I googled, and apparently there is something that happens and is followed by a proper credit scroll. Like, the game will let us know when it is over. Uh, unfortunately, a thing that I did read while I was doing my googling and trying to avoid a specific spoiler about, like, what it was that was going to happen is that... It seems like nobody knows how it's triggered. For some people, it happened a couple hours into uh, play. For some people, they had found what they thought to be like basically every clip in the thing, and it took hours of just fiddling around to get the uh, the ending event to trigger. So that's a bummer. This is going to be the last episode. If it ends up that I, I just spend a lot of time screwing around here um, and nothing happens for 90 minutes... I'll just cut most of that out uh, so that we can so that we can observe this ending. Uh, so I don't really know what to do is the thing. Like we can just like play with the sorts and stuff. Um, just look for more clips. Just yeah. And I guess a good way to see more clips is to um, to search from Marissa, right? She's in an awful lot of this stuff. Okay, yeah, this is new. So we're just going to keep watching footage <laughs> until the thing happens, I guess. Okay. We're in the lieutenant's office. We start on one of the Polaroids from the warehouse. We come out. And go. They stuck these on all the patrol cars on 6th Street. It's not a good look. They're trying to piss us off. Well, it's working. You like all this orange stuff, right? Minsky, too? What does it have to do with anything? I was there following up her alibi. Uh, you're saying her to avoid saying her name. She's under your skin already. Yeah. I was there following up her alibi. Look, if you want off of this, you can. Walker can take primary. It's clear, girl. Friend, you're a bunch of crap. A bunch of junky artists. They don't even know what week it is. His dick was chopped off. Of course it's the girlfriend. I delivered the, the deliver it to the lieutenant, but hit Goodman on friend and girlfriend. It's clear the girl did it. Friend? Her alibi's crap. A, a bunch of junky artists. They don't even know what week it is. His dick was chopped off. Of course it's the girlfriend. No, it's my case. There's no evidence she did it. But there's none that she did it. My goodness. Regain composure. Being calm is your superpower. You got this. So I work the case. It's what I do. If you're done wasting my time, it's what I'd like to get back to. This is a red ball. I had the mayor and his cultural commissioner chew my ear off. Don't screw me on this one, Goodman. I got his diary. The killer's in it, I'm sure. He was meticulous with names. There's a code in there, too. I haven't figured it out yet. So you will. See that in your eyes. And a ruby? Knock, knock. Can I borrow Detective Goodman? Yeah, he's all yours. Ruby, who do you think of the artist? Mr. Minsky? Yeah. His girlfriend? Walker smiles at Goodman. And we cut. Okay, I mean, I think at this point we're not going to learn anything new about the like the plots of the films. We we have seen everything. We really know everything. I think there is to know. I guess I'm open to being proven wrong. Uh, so this is location scouting stuff. Have we seen this one? Maybe. I, I think so. This one we've definitely seen.
Goodman sits in the car watching the. This one we've definitely seen. I shouldn't. I should have known that was going to jump off the mirror instead of off of her face. I mean, I think we've probably seen a pretty large percentage of the total footage. This, I think, is new, though. But, but I think we've probably seen a pretty large percentage of the total footage, right? Because we do know, like, pretty much the whole plot of all three of the movies and everything. I wish I had a sense of what it was that we were looking for. And to be perfectly honest with you, just, just so this is clear, not that it, I guess, <laughs> matters very much, but I would have stopped playing. If it was just me, I'm, I'm good. I came back because I figured, like, you know, for this thing that I'm doing... I should try to like get the ending on on camera for the people who do want to see like the the final final whatever, but I feel like I feel like we got we we got what I came for at the very least. Twelve Delta, take one. I do like that look on her face. Like, is, this is seriously going in the movie, huh? All right. Wrong. How scary. Okay, definitely new. We're okay going without him. I just don't want to be here tomorrow going again. It's just weird, okay? Okay. Scene 63, Alpha, take one. <sighs> They'll get this retiled. It's been a while. Heather, why are we holding on? I need to talk to you. Okay, what's up? It wasn't an accident. What was it? Maria's death. It wasn't an accident. You seem certain. Oh, they're wrong. How scary? She couldn't swim. I know. It seems crazy. Honey, Maria could swim. She swam every morning here. She swam in the splash video last week. What are you talking about? I know what's happening. What? There are five stages to grief. You are in the first denial. Listen, I am sorry I was callous earlier. None of us want Marie to be gone. We're all processing it. Except for Mark. That's on him. Mark what? He moved in with his personal trainer. You know, they had that thing. I did not know that. Oh. Thought I told you. I would tell you to keep the secret, but I guess... You said I could pick something? Huh? From the house. You said I could take anything? Oh, yeah. Anything at all, as long as it's under 2,500 bucks. Just find the estate rep before you go, so sign it out. Listen, I gotta show these guys the garden. You gonna be okay in there on your own? Yeah, I think so. Just take it. Take care, sweetheart, okay? Let's do lunch next month. Cut. Larry, let's go again. More fatherly this time. Patronizing. Sure. So what was the date on that? 8.30. Okay, so that's pretty late. Uh, so she, at this point, Backwards Lady is having trouble maintaining, right? We know that the maintaining the two bodies is stressful. So, I mean, that's interesting, at least. That's, that's, I think that's the first time we've seen evidence that she just, like, couldn't hold it, couldn't hold both the bodies up all the time. Okay, this one we've seen. Tech rehearsal starts in an hour. Yep. Hmm. No, this is definitely new. Scene 44A, take two.
that enough? I was pretty sure as soon as we saw that ending frame that there was going to be something in this clip. Uh, so it sounded pretty subtle. I guess let's go back at normal speed until we hear it. Artists create, transform, and destroy. They find bodies and capture them, own them, and tether themselves to immortality. Somebody like parasites. It's interesting. It's interesting in the sense that it's so blatant. Again, I do sort of wonder, like, I wonder what the gating is like for these clips. Because obviously, if you found this clip early, it would be uh, really something. <laughs> you, you would have, I imagine, quite a reaction to that. But because it's so blatant about what it's doing, it, you can't see it early, right? Like, it's got to be a thing that's locked behind... I don't know, having unlocked a certain amount of footage or having seen the backwards lady a certain number of times. or I'm still very curious how this whole thing is constructed. Uh, I don't think there was anything. Let's just real quick. Uh, forward backward. That is to say, double backwards. Through this, just to make sure. Okay, yeah, that was just the, uh, that was just Marissa again at the end there, I'm pretty sure. I guess we can be sure. Right, yeah, this is just the way back into the normal clip. Okay. Uh, well. It's a fertility mask from Tanzania. Fairly sure. I'm sorry, we do actually have to be able to see your face there. We saw this. Pretty sure we saw this. Because I remember that. I don't remember them talking, but I remember that mask. Okay, this we saw for sure. Get to a part of the clip where her face is a little bit more visible. That right. There we go. Sixty ass. Take. Sixty ass. Take one. Action. Ring, ring, ring. Sign them. Show me you love me still as you once loved me. I'm Ambrosio, the holiest man in Madrid. I've saved souls for you. I've preached your words more eloquently than any other. I'm your man. In nine hours, they will burn me at the stake of the auto de fe. Is this not an insult to you? They burn your most devoted servant. But why to suffer for their sins as your child did? I will happily do so. But just please show me a sign that this is what you wish. So right now, my working theory is that if we just keep seeing footage, it'll it'll happen like the thing that's gating us from the ending is having seen a like a certain percentage of the clips. And if that's true, then I think this strategy of jumping from Marissa's face just to see more because she's going to be in almost everything is pretty solid. But I am also wondering if maybe it could be something else. Maybe, maybe there is like maybe it's a certain set of clips. There's like there's like, you know. 
six clips and you have to see each one of them in order to like have the information necessary to understand whatever ending or it's, it's so hard to know. Airside counter. Then after a beat, we... I think we'd seen that. At this point, you fuck Marissa. You idiots, you're going to have killed her. And his seed. This is new. This, I think, is new. That's a challenge with the filmmaking, how to make her a murderer and sympathetic. The great miracle of this world is that women do so little murdering. I should put that in the movie. And Miss Marcel, a question for you. What does Carl Greenwood taste like? Good question. His mouth tastes like watermelon and whiskey. Mm. His sweat tastes like salted butter mm -hmm. <laughs> from Brittany. Mm. And his seed tastes like a Kumamoto oyster. Freshly I wonder if the backwards clip here is going to be how they killed and replaced Carl. Because it, it feels a lot like the John clip, doesn't it? Carl Greenwood was... He really lived in the moment. Which I think it's not easy for me. He had something... I told him something more and savory about him. I think he would have gone on to be an even bigger star. Poor Carl. Nope, just her talking about having done it. So in this... In this moment, assuming that this is a literal moment that literally happened, this is um, the other one already, right? You know, I guess that's the thing. We could try to look for... I, I had assumed that whatever happened to Carl happened off camera because we've seen so much Minsky-related footage already and we haven't seen that. But maybe it is captured somewhere. We could try bouncing off of Carl's face for a while and see if we find it. Well, to be honest, I heard Mr. Dirk here's hot shit and... This is new, too. So, this is a chemistry test, Mr. Greenwood. Usually when I do a chemistry test, it's to see if the girl works with me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel under pressure. You can relax. You're clearly very handsome and charismatic. Thank you. Do you think you can find a connection to the character? To Goodman? Yeah, I'm sure. Because Goodman is... <laughs> well, Goodman is the one being seduced. But I guess you are more familiar with the role of the seducer. Look, I, I can act. I wanted to do this picture because I wanted to do something a little different. I feel like if I don't show the other side, I think with the whole studio set up, it's on the way out. I don't want to do historical epics, you dig? I, I want to get in this new wave. Has a woman ever said no to you, Carl? And meant it? <laughs> no, 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 no. 
What do you think about New York? Uh, it's a dark kind of place, isn't it? <laughs> Look, I'm a California boy through and through, and I know there's an after dark kind of thing you can point to there, but um, New York, it's a scary place. Driving him from the airport, I felt like I was descending into hell. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> Are we gonna run a scene? We could. And I like getting to know you. This isn't the scene. Why did you agree to come out here and meet? Well, to be honest, I heard Mr. Dirk here's hot shit, and Douglas Simons has signed up. I see there's something happening here, but mostly I said yes, because you were a part of this. I think you're going to be a huge deal, Miss Marcel. Do you know how to kiss Mr. Greenwood? Uh, yeah, I believe I do. There is chemistry here. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that the instant the kiss was over, he is aggressively chewing the gum again. Also, can I just say, uh, to answer her asking, has a woman ever said no to you? And him and him answering what and meant it? No, I don't think so. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, also new. It's interesting. There's, there's these other cop characters in the movie. I feel like we've seen so much of Minsky. <laughs> there are like characters and subplots that we still haven't gotten yet. Rehearsal, scene 31, Olga's apartment. Team of two detectives and Ruby are searching the place. Ruby points Goodman to a collection of photos on the wall. Art appreciation time. Collage of nude male body parts with Minsky's face on it, where the genitals should be a splash of red. Does this work as a confession? It's art. Also? Holy shit. Find a mask yet? Still looking. Wow. I thought I told you to keep it right Don't this. worry about it. I'm gonna call it a night. I'll see you at the station tomorrow. You got this, right? I am ready to wake up from this dream. All right. When you walk out, let's, uh, let's figure that out. Yeah, the script says I hold her hand, right? Exactly. When I do that, is it like a boyfriend, girlfriend? Is it like a parent dragging a naughty child out there? Can I put my hand out for you to hold? Right. I'm the provocateur. I like that. That's right. <clears throat> I'll see you at the station tomorrow. You got this, right? I am ready to wake up from this dream. I like it. All right, we want to amp up the coziness as much as we can. We're about to hit him with a good bit of apartment sequence. Right. Yeah, she's right. It's a good change. You know, if it is the case that rather than looking for a certain percentage of the total footage, we're looking for certain individual clips until the game feels like we've got the beats of the story and there is a clip of Goodman being killed that is definitely one we would need, right? Scene 40B, take three <coughs> Pardon me Governor's personal effects. Minus New York. We're just a confession in there, huh? Thanks.
he looks checked out here. This has got to be the other one, right? I didn't notice the date on the clapper, but... Ah, uh, yeah, this one we've seen, but I need to wait for him to turn back around. Dead. This one we've definitely seen, because I remember, I remember the doorway here. Wanted to pres fuck, you said earlier you only photograph people you want to fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Good moment to jump in, <laughs> jump into the scene. Just real quick, remind us of all the very important work they're doing. You running a racket on the side? Uh, I inherited it from my parents. It is kind of interesting that in the the jump we just did, it did take that as me clicking his face because we clicked in a mirror, and we know that mirrors are one of the types of objects that um that the thing is sensitive to. That's Carl, that's Carl Greenwood right there. Come on, Kim. If we had a sense of what had happened to Carl, well, to be we could maybe like look for something more specific, but I don't think we know, do we? We just know that at some point the other one replaced him. Also, we are for real getting... Um, We're getting a lot of the same clips over and over again here. I wish I, I wish I felt like I had any control at all over how it was going to decide where to jump to, or you know. This is new, right? Scene twenty B, take one. Action. You can't talk now. So hold up one hand for no, two for yes. Got that? It's going to take a little while to dry. Shall we have some fun while we wait? To understand me and Minsky, you have to know what it feels like to completely give yourself over to another person. Are you ready to do that? quite freeing to give yourself over to another person. Whether you live or die is in their hands. That takes the weight off. Breathing has a reflex action. We're never conscious of how close we are to just dropping dead and dying until we have to think about it. Art is about being aware of our mortality and then transcending it. You're obsessed with dead bodies. You spend all day with them. You're obsessed with the finality of death, but art is about looking beyond it. We know that death is just a transformation from one state to another. You're about to shoot a handful of your seed inside me, and that's new life, though it won't amount to much. The French call me orgasm, the petite 
Ma, when you die, when you give yourself to another individual, you do die. As an individual, you give yourself to them. You become part of the work, part of their work. And... All right, I have a couple of thoughts. First of all, not that I, first of all, not that I'm an expert, and secondly, not that I'm trying to miss the point of the scene or anything, but I gotta feel like we don't know exactly what the the apparatus is like on the inside of the face, but I gotta feel like closing up the breathing tube and, you know, like, causing him to be, like, this gotta run the risk of creating, like, bubbles in the plaster as he still tries to breathe and there's nowhere for it to go, right? Like, around the mouth. I'm just saying, you're gonna fuck up your mask. Thing number two, a handful, maybe the worst descriptor for an amount of, of semen. Just not a fan. Just don't like that. Uh, finally, this has got to be it, right? This has got to be the Goodman Dies clip. There definitely was a sound, and I was not at all surprised that it was the case. Maybe this is the other one dies clip. I don't even know if we remember the fight. It was so long ago. I wasn't trying to kill you. You were, I wouldn't have been here. Not actually as meaningful as I might like. The thing is, even if it is like, I don't know. I have to say, I think if the gating is like it wants you to see certain plot beats happen, I I should hope that they're not things that are referred to in a lot of other places because like knowing that they occurred, unless there's something really significant about like the clip itself, I don't know. I don't feel like we're getting a lot of new information here, I guess is really all I'm saying. Scene 35E, take three. As I was just saying, not really feeling like you got a lot of uh, information out of that. Let's just wait. What is it doing? To, to be clear, my mouse cursor is here. I am clicking on this clip, but it doesn't want me to enter this clip. Some hmm, so, okay. Something's very strange here. Hold on. Yeah, every clip around it is okay. Why is this? Let's 
This is the clip where he looks all sullen and stuff. There's not anything in it, but why is the... Hmm, why is the UI being strange about it? No idea. Fuck. What the fuck? All right, you. Calm down. Take it down a notch. All right, tell me something I don't know about Carl Greenwood. Okay, definitely new. Blaster and some cloth fibers. Someone made a mask of his face. Before or after death? Before. They usually have a tube. We figure he let himself be cast, but the killer cut off the air supply. The penis was cut off post-mortem, though the condition of the corpus cavernosum and the amount of blood does suggest it was erect when this happened, so probably soon after death. Jesus. When does a crime scene begin? A crime scene begins at the point where the suspect changes intent into action. And who had the intent? Much in there about our muse? Well, nothing incriminating. Some of it's in code, though. Mm, it might just be doodle. Always has his head in a book. Missing what's right in front of his eyes. I think he really thinks she didn't do it. I think he wants to fuck her. <laughs> I don't think Goodman fucks. Cut! <laughs> He's alive! <laughs> There's a lot of, like, bits of structure and scaffolding, I suppose, that there is still, um, that we have yet to see. I wonder if we will discover anything else that's really, um, anything we haven't seen so far that is really juicy, like, really meaningful. Take four. I will keep running this until we've knocked the charisma out of you, Carl. Goodman is as handsome as you are, but he's less aware of it. Action. All done? A couple hundred pages left. All that reading, you'll go blind. I personally believe you learn more psychology in a week working tables than you do reading a textbook. Deviant psychology, though? This is New York. How about a wager? Another game. Next customer walks in. We we'll both write down which table they're going to pick. Deal. Well, you get your shirts. They're nice. Kensington Taylor's on 12th Street. I picked some up for my brother. They're expensive. That's OK. My brother's more of a tracksuit and vest kind of guy. Oh, hey, Tony. I got a table for you right over here. Yep, right here. <laughs> I'll get you some coffee, OK? You don't have feelings. All's fair and level walk. What's the draw? Jesus. You're the deviant. Ugh. Anyhow, I don't date cops. Ring, ring. Hey, good miss. Phone call for you. The precinct. Cut. That's good. Ready to move on to the standing close-ups? Miss Perkins, you can flirt with Carl now. OK. <laughs> Hey, you need some change? Buy your brother a shirt. Huh. 
Uh, this is new, right? 41 Abracadabra, take one. Rated. They perverted you. She broke you, Carl. Got the lighter? It's the worst thing you've ever done. Hey man, listen, not that I'm a professional actor or anything, but when an unexpected thing happens, don't immediately look back at the crew, would ya? It's interesting that that works for matching. Usually, usually you need the actual face. Yes, thank you. It does feel like maybe we're um maybe we're at the point where Carl's not yielding anything new anymore. So I mean it's it very well still may be the case that whatever whatever was done to him was done in a way where we don't have footage of it. Um back to Marissa, I guess. I feel very sad about what happened to Carl. I wonder what the total number of clips is in the game. I suppose I could have looked that up to know how close we are to having seen it all. I was there. But perhaps I wish. Yeah, no, this one, this one too. It's dead. Oh, this is new though. It may well be the case that there's something else I need to see that I can't get to. This way, though, something else that doesn't necessarily directly involve either of them. I don't know, maybe like a John clip or something? Scene 58, Bravo, take one. Action. They're playing Maria's music. Look at this place where she would be sad. Go, Lucy. Excuse me? Are you Maria? Can you... I'm not Maria. Didn't you hear? Maria's dead. Cut. Got in one. Moving on. Sure. Yeah, moving quickly because having trouble maintaining, trying to get the job done quickly. A lot of little giveaways here. I, Sam Barlow's British, yeah, or like whoever wrote these scripts is British, um, and not not doing a particularly good job of cloaking it. Um, I think this is new as well. Scene 85, Bravo, take one. Action. I just have one more song for you tonight. It's a cover of a song I bet you know, but I like it better like this. Anyway, thanks for coming to my set. I'm Christina Campbell. I don't have CDs or anything, but... If you like my stuff, just come back and see me again sometime. I'm always here. The two of us, we should have known better. The two of us could be so much better. You and I were meant. 
want to get along but i want to cry when we get it wrong you and i on the edge of it all hold me close baby when we start to fall you and me forever more baby that scares me can't we just be you and me everything comes in pairs me and you you and me got two of everything two hands two eyes got two of everything two too much of everything that isn't right how does she feel she's happy heather isn't dead she's a part of her synthesis no CDs or anything, no legacy, no recordings. I'm always here, live forever in this moment, okay? Let's go again. I wonder if the quality of the writing in this, in Two of Everything, being so poor, like I had theorized before that it was it was meant to show that like the backwards lady simply just doesn't actually have the spark to create so much as he has, she has the spark to perform. But now I wonder if maybe, cause like that song is the lyrics of that song are bad, right? Like very bad, very like uh, bad in a way where you're supposed to listen to them and go, oof. So I'm wondering more and more if it's meant to show that she was already like, whatever was going on with her was going on while she was writing the movie, right? All of this stuff about about your death and trying to live forever and whatnot um, was clearly prompted by how she was already falling apart. And so I wonder if the low quality of the writing overall is part of that. Is it, you know, she's, she's not able to be at the top of her game. I am definitely worried that the clip here, the clip we're going to see is just Backwards Lady singing the song, um, which I... I hate to sound like I'm impatient, but I do sort of just want to see the thing, right? We are not going to get much out of a couple of minutes of watching Backwards Lady sing, is all. Huh. I've come to hate my body. And Watch the bluebird 
Well, that was not what I was expecting. The soundtrack is immediately menacing. Um, yeah, what a weird, interesting thing. I'm not familiar with that song. I, I assume that song exists independent of the game. I don't know. I guess it could be something they wrote just for this. But it, what, an, what a really weird, interesting choice to have her lip syncing in an inky void. This thing that someone else has created and then in the middle of it be so overcome, like... And, you know, it, it's it's interesting. I'm not really I'm not quite sure what they're doing with it. It's interesting because it mirrors what's happening in the scene that this clip is hidden inside of, but only sort of, right? Because in that scene, hmm, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. That's very strange, and it's very weird that it's so uh, long and weird. Yeah, I did just say that it's weird that it's weird, but I'm right. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's... um. Because at this moment in the actual plot of the game, this is something that the backwards lady has written, right? At least as far as we know. Maybe, maybe it turns out it's not. Maybe it turns out she's the but like we see we see the script of the other like we see the the early shots of the other movie where the idea was sort of born so we know yeah we know that she came up with it i don't know that's really weird i don't know what is what we are to make of that that is i do like this bit where it's where it's marissa and john sort of like having one stream of overlapping thought. And it's a much more interesting way of representing like a line of thought in the way people think than what you usually get in media where it's like a single narrative voice, which is not how my brain works at all. I don't know. I guess maybe it's, maybe that's not universal. This is new, right? This is, I think, a thing we've not seen. 24 Jurek, take one. Action. Okay. Direct me. Okay, let's get on the tomb. Huh. You, uh, get on top. How are you going to convince Arthur to include this? <laughs> I'm going to go straight to Gino. You're naughty. It's for the picture. All right, we need to see Matilda transformed. Mm. There are pleasures this body can give to you which you cannot imagine. Exactly. All right, make it look like you're fucking him. Can she? Can she? Fuck him. She's the devil. Can't she change her shape? That would be a different movie. All right, let's roll on this a while, and then you uh, finish with a big orgasm. <laughs> if makeup were here, I'd have him spray you down. Oh, I got you. Perfect. <sighs> I'm acting. <laughs> You'll need to do more than just lie there. I've, uh, I've never slept with an actress. Bullshit. Well, I've never slept with the director of photography. No, that's not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of shot. Put it in the movie. Fisher will never know. It's crazy. Make it like I'm fucking the camera. <laughs> huh. 
Well, I mean, that's that's something we didn't know about before. I don't know that it's terribly meaningful to the um, the overall plot necessarily. I'm kind of curious what what the backwards bit in here is going to be. All right, 2x is not fast enough, clearly. <laughs> so that's not Durek, right? That's the Ambrosio actor. Curious, right? What is that supposed to be? Why would that? Hmm. <laughs> I do not know what to make of that. This we've seen. Fisher sucks. Let's screw, <laughs> screw that director. I'm glad he's probably dead. Uh, yeah, this we have seen. Um, oh, you know what? It let us zoom on blood earlier. I'm curious if we can get if the blood on her face is a, a zone. It looks like no. Because I was thinking if we could focus on blood, that might be a good way to potentially find, like, a Carl's death scene. When I was a kid, I always wanted to live in Hollywood. And that Is this new? We've seen so many rehearsal shots for this. I think this is new, though. Scene 27, rehearsal. Welcome to Marvelous Naomi. You will be this movie's ghost. You are Marissa's shadow and reflection. That. When I'm acting, I always have ideas for my scene partner. Here, I can use them. Mm. Give me something to play with. Okay. Just let me know if there's something special you want me to do. Ready? Naomi and Maria. Action. Heather lets Maria into her apartment. <laughs> Maria wheels a roller bag. They're both wearing the exact same clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to your apartment for the next two days. Oh. Your place is so cozy. Thank you. How long have you lived here? Five years. Yeah, ever since I moved to L.A. When I was a kid, I always wanted to live in Hollywood, and now here I am. Here you are. <laughs> right, so I packed you everything that you should need. Don't worry about any of it having ever been worn. It's all brand new. They should dress you for the event when you get there. And here is my wallet. So if you want to buy anything, just put it on my card. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Hang on, I'll get mine. Okay. Oh. Oh, your place is so cute. Oh my God, your bed. <laughs> I never make my bed. Oh, I always do, even on vacation. You know they have people in hotels that can do that for you. I know, I just, I can't help it. It's how I start my day. Oh, is this my infamous namesake? <laughs> oh, hi, Maria, you old bitch. You're so pretty. Here's my wallet. Um, you can use my card, but uh, just don't spend over 200 bucks because it'll go over the limit. I'll behave. <laughs> Let's swap phones, too. There we go. Thank you. Christina Campbell, thought you had it changed. I did. I just didn't update my license yet. Mm, we are younger than you, too. Gary was wrong about us being long lost twins. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'll feed the cat. Right, so we've got her food all set up over here, just one scoop in the morning and one at night. Um, she likes to have a little tuna water mixed in if you have a can open. I can show you how to run the dishwasher. I know how to run a dishwasher. <laughs> right. Um, 
Well, my neighbor across the courtyard is Dorothy. She's super sweet. She'll let you into the complex if you forget your key. There's a good noodle place downstairs. Oh, and if uh, someone bangs on the door at night, just uh, scare them off with this. Is it real? Sure. My dad gave it to me when I moved out here. It's not registered, so you could kill someone with it and they couldn't trace it. Heather. <laughs> I'm my dad's only child. He taught me to never point a gun at someone unless you're prepared to use it. It's not that rough a neighborhood. I'm just messing with oh. you. Uh, there's a church across the street that starts up every Friday night, but the music is great. Oh, and the donuts next door to die for. Ooh, sounds good. Yeah, it's, it sounds really good, actually. Okay, well, I'm gonna go then. Okay. <laughs> Promise you'll still be my double when you get back? You're not gonna quit when you get rich? I don't know, maybe I'll get a taste for it. Bump you off. I'll be the real Maria. Mm, you don't have it in you to kill. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We hold on Heather's face as she walks down her balcony, walks towards the stairs. Her smile grows with her confidence. That's great, Naomi. Now let's swap places. Will you be Heather, Marissa, you be? Maria. Uh, can I quickly watch back what we just did? I just want to make sure I lock how you did it in my head. Sure. Sure. Yeah, there's like a lot of, there's a lot of bits of movie that have to be made to make a movie. Gosh, I hope we don't have to actually see all of them. Scene 42, Bravo, take five. Have we seen the actual performance before? I don't think so. <laughs> is the birthday boy out there? <laughs> there he is. Well, Mr. Hustenberg, I know you've had a big year. A really big year. After all, that's, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I was just so honored to be invited to perform for you here tonight. And if you're really 50, I'd like the numbers of your therapist and your personal trainer. <laughs> well, now I know you all aren't here to see me talk, so I'll just say one thing. A man surrounded by his friends and family on his birthday is a good man, and a lucky one too. Can we drink to that? All right. Thank you. Cheers. And now, a big round of applause for the real star of this evening, Mr. Andrew Hessenberg. There's everything bad in the world but charming women. I'll walk out like you own everything. Shall I go again? Well, well, I must say, I can now retire from private enterprise after having had happy birthdays sung to me in such a sweet and wholesome way. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. You're an absolute angel. Now, I know it's my birthday, but I'd like to give you a gift. <laughs> Whoops. When you look at that microphone, I hope you think of me and all of us here tonight. You're worth your weight in gold. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hatzenberg, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now let's get this party started. Hey, let's go again. Can we clear the fucking room? People in Terry's eye line are scared. Oh, yeah, sorry. I like Maria's like laser anger focus on the person who's upsetting John. Like the the idea of two people being controlled by the same entity is carried off in a way that I think is really interesting here. That said, we are now 70 minutes into this episode and I don't feel like we got anything out of this time. Like we're just kind of idly f fucking around here. Not, and not that none of it's, like, interesting, but none of it's useful as far as finishing the game. Um, 
And I do sort of want to move on, but I also, like, if they're going to keep showing us stuff that is, you know, potentially interesting, hmm, I just don't know how I want to handle this. All right, here's what I think we're going to do. I'm going to call it here for today. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'm going to do a little bit more looking around to see if there is definitely something that can trigger the credits. And if maybe, maybe somebody has, I don't know, maybe somebody has figured it out with more precision in the, in the time since I actually, since I looked, which was at this point, you know, it was a couple of days ago. Uh, and yeah, we'll just, we'll just see. Cause I do, I do want to see whatever it is. So yeah, come back next time for that, I guess, or maybe even appended to this time. I'm not sure how I'm going to handle it yet. And we'll see you then.